Hey, it's John with JohnLaGuardia.com bringing you tips and tools for outdoor adventure. On today's episode, we've got a review of the Platt Inflatable Kayak by Coca Pelli. Let's go! The Platt helps you get from road to river in a short amount of time because it's lightweight and packable. It comes with a breathable carry bag and it only weighs 37 and a half pounds when filled with the kayak and all the included accessories. So that was quite easy to get down to the put-in spot. You'll see it comes with a seat, which is an EVA seat. Uh, it also has uh, two removable fins that go on the bottom as well. You can see me pulling those out of the bag. Uh, it also includes a nano barrel pump along with the pump hose and some accessories. It also comes with a patch kit, which is pretty awesome. And um, the best part of all, it does come with the four-piece Alpine Lake Paddle, which is uh, made out of carbon fiber for the, the posts. And uh, it's a super awesome paddle. I used that uh, up on an Alpine Lake with one of their pack rafts last year. So pretty awesome. Um, you'll also see here I'm going to pull out the uh, kayak itself. So that's the plat folded up and uh, comes with an included strap to help you kind of strap down the kayak when it's all folded up and that just makes it a little more convenient to put it in the bag. But as you see here, uh, I tripped a little bit, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's super quick and easy to unfold and then you kind of you kind of unfold both ends and then you separate uh, the side walls a little bit. You kind of see me doing that here. And once you separate the side walls, then you can uh, start the inflation process. It does have two inflation ports. They're HR inflation valves that can be easily accessed on both ends there where my hands are. So you can see I'm just unscrewing the top cap on the valve. And uh, then next I unpacked the nano barrel pump, attach the hose to the inflation port. You want to make sure you get it on the right side of that handle. And uh, then you attach the other end to the kayak itself in the inflation port. Now, once you get it, uh, attached to the inflation port. On the back of the pump, there's a little switch. So you can see I kind of started pumping there, but then I realized, oh, there's a switch here. And that's for single action or double action. I chose double action because then the pump works both ways, both up and down. So you only have to inflate to two PSI. And this process probably took me just a couple minutes for me to get both sidewalls inflated. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a stand-up paddleboard where you get super tired. It happened so quickly that, you know, uh, it was pretty easy to do. And a pro tip, you want to make sure and turn the inflation valve counterclockwise before inserting the inflation tube. This will prevent the loss of air when you disconnect the hose and pull it out. So there you can see me putting the cap back on the one side. So why I'm pumping up the other side here, let's go ahead and talk through some of the specs on this kayak. So the water rating is flat water, so bays and inlets, things like that, that are class one. Um, it does have um, three chambers. You've got the left pontoon, the right pontoon, and then the drop stitch flooring, which you're gonna see here in a second when I install the seat. The weight capacity of this is 330 pounds. The outer length is 123 inches by 34 inches, and the inner length is 108 inches by 16 inches. The packed size is 21 by 16 by 10 inches. The D-rings on the kayak are stainless steel, one inch, and there are 20 of those throughout the entire kayak and it does come with a lifetime manufacturer's warranty as well. This kayak is both bucket or self-failing. There are valves on the bottom floor as well, so if you get into rough water, you can use those. 
After the kayak was all inflated, I installed the seat using the Velcro, which you're going to see here on the bottom of the boat and the bottom of the seat. I um, just put that into place and kind of pushed my hand against it to get it to seat good, and that seemed to work well. Then I took the rubber band from the straps. They were kind of clasped all together. So I took that off, and then I clipped uh, the straps at the end. They have these little like carabiner looking clips. Uh, and then on the opposite side of that, the strap can kind of be threaded through. Uh, so I went ahead and that, there was one that fell off. So I threaded that through like you see here, and then I clipped it to the D-ring. And um, once attached, I was able to simply pull the webbing tight to get the seat into proper position. Um, and one pro tip here is um, with the fins off of the boat, you can just kind of set the kayak down and then sit in the seat and then adjust your uh, straps both in the back and the front. That seemed to work very well for me before I launched. So you can see here, um, I got one strap in, the other one I'm just kind of adjusting it a little bit, uh, clipping it onto the D-ring and then adjusting it towards the back. There's another kind of adjustment uh, plastic piece there. So um, you can kind of see how I did that. And here's a little update from me while I was on site about uh, just how easy this kayak was. Hey, I just want to say that this was super quick and easy. It probably took me about five minutes to set this up, complete time. Um, this seat is pretty amazing. It's got Velcro on the bottom, and then they just clip in the front and the back, and then you adjust the straps. Pretty easy. The next thing I did to get ready to launch here was uh, just to put the Alpine paddle together. You can see right here I'm putting two of the carbon fiber shafts together and then one end of the paddle. Uh, and then the other so they use those marine clips. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but um, They work super quick and easy For installation and on the side of the boat There are two velcro straps that you can strap the paddle into so that you don't uh, Lose it when you're getting out in the water So uh, at that point I was ready to install the fins on the bottom, so I just uh, flipped the kayak over and then um, started to install the fins. I started with the back one first, and that's where the big one goes. Um, it just basically slides in. You can It's pretty intuitive to use. You just slide it in. There's a slot in the back, and then you put the little plastic pin in there as well so I did that on the back and then the front was um, a little bit more difficult for me I had to kind of jam it in there so that the slots would line up so I could put the little clip in there so uh, that took a little extra effort I don't know if that's just because I didn't get it in there right away or you know if it was just a little bit harder to get in there but it wasn't a big deal at all at that point I was pumped ready to get out on the water, put my life jet vest on, and uh, grab the boat. You can see how super lightweight it is, how easy it is to carry down the shore into the water. And uh, at 24 pounds, you know, with the seat and the paddle, it's super easy to pick it up. Uh, there's side handles and uh, very easy to grab. Uh, you can see as I'm getting into the boat, uh, it was easy enough. I kind of got in sideways, then unstrapped the Alpine paddle, and then I was kind of off into the water. Yep, just uh, ready to launch here and out into the water. The performance of the kayak was quite impressive, actually, and uh, it didn't take me any time to really get used to it all. And, you know, I have had experience with other kayaks, uh, sea kayaks, things like that. And then, of course, inflatable uh, pack rafts as well. Uh, this isn't as squirrely as a pack raft. It's a little more stable with those fins underneath, so that's kind of nice. 
I paddled around for, you know, a couple hours and thoroughly enjoyed my time at the lake. I even brought along uh, a couple models with me and we did a commercial spec shoot together as well. So uh, the feedback that I received from them too was, wow, this kayak is awesome. It's so easy to use. It's so lightweight. And the fact that it's packable, you can just throw it in the back of your car, get to your spot and then uh, unpack it uh, is quite, quite simple. Um, one thing that I found, you know, when I got home with the kayak was uh, just that it, it tended to still have some water in the bottom of it. So you got to make sure that you wipe it out real good and, you know, let it kind of air dry outside. And uh, you don't want to put it in direct sunlight, but, um, you know, just let it dry in the shade upside down or whatever. And uh, that seems to work really well uh, so it doesn't get moldy or, you know, have to keep moisture in there. Uh, but before you put it back in the bag and fold it all up and do all that, you want to make sure that uh, you get some of that moisture, if not all of it, out of there. And you can see me here. I'm just coming back in uh, just from just a quick little jaunt here out into the lake. And you can see um, you, got, you want to be really careful of those fins on the bottom. So. Uh, be sure to remember that there's two down there uh, and it's best to really scope out your entry and exit points so you don't scrape them on the rocks. So make a plan ahead of time uh, and stick to where you're going to enter and exit the kayak uh, in enough water so that you don't wreck those fins on the shoreline. But uh, you can see that was pretty easy for me to get out of the kayak and bring it back up on the shore. So from a rating perspective for this review, I gave it five stars. I'm very impressed with the Cocapelli flat inflatable kayak. It's easy to transport, inflate, and set up for just about any type of flat water mission that you've got. So if you found this review helpful today, hit that like button down below. I'll put some comments down in the description below as well where you can check out more on this awesome inflatable kayak. And one way that you can help out the channel here is to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Peace.